Welcome to Electro Online, and now let's see if we can come up with a more general way of describing and predicting and finding the probability of tossing coins or anything that has to do with uh, two possibilities in each try, for example, coins or zero ones with computers and logic and that kind of thing. All right, so we want to describe the probability function in a more general way, but in order to do that, we're going to start off with kind of getting an intuitive feeling for this. So first of all, we're going to take a coin, we're going to start with a single coin, and when we flip it, the sample space will be heads or tails, therefore we have an event where it could be heads or an event where it could be tails, so two possibilities here. When we flip two coins, we have a sample space with four elements. We could end up with a head, 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 tail, tail, head, or tail, tail. So therefore we can have three events, one event where it could be all heads, one event where it could be all tails, and one event where it could either be heads or tails. Now, how many elements are there in each case? Well, let's see here. Here we have one element, there we have one element, here we have one element, and one element because there's only one possibility. But in the case of heads or tails, it could be heads, tails, or tail, heads. So there's two elements in this event. They add up to four elements, the same as in the sample space. Now what if you flip the coin three times? So now we have eight possible outcomes in the sample space. We have heads, 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 tails, heads, tail, heads, heads, tail, tails, tail, heads, heads, tail, heads, tails, tail, tail, heads, and tail, tail, tails. So eight outcomes, there's eight elements in the sample space. But notice, we can have an event where all three are heads, we can have an event where all three are tails, or we can have an event where two are heads and one is tails, and an event where one is heads and two is tails. Now, how many possible outcomes are there in each case? Well, there's only one for three heads and one for three tails. That would be heads, 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 that would be A, and tail, tail, tails, that would be D. But what about two heads and one tail? Well, here's one head and a tail, so that would be B. Uh, two heads, one tail, that would be B again. And two heads, one tail, that would be B. So there's three different outcomes, so there's three elements to the event B. And for C, notice we have head, two tails, head, two tails, head, two tails. So there's three elements in event C. They all add up to one, three, three, eight, one. When add them all up, we get a total of eight outcomes filling up the sample space. What if we have four coins and we flip them? Well, now it gets a little more complicated. You can have all heads, you can have whole, all tails, and a lot of other combinations uh, between them. And so we end up with five events. One event where it's all heads, one event where it's all tails. Then we have an event where three heads, one tail, two heads, two tails, and one head, three tails. How many possibilities, how many elements in each case? Well, the first and the last ones are pretty straightforward. You know, there's only one element there. One element there, there's only one outcome where it's all heads, one outcome where it's all tails. What about three heads and one tail? Well, when we do the addition, when we add them all up, if you add them all out, you can find out that there's going to be four occasions where you get three heads and one tail, and there's going to be four occasions where you get one head and three tails. And finally, all the possibilities where you get two heads and two tails, well, there's six of those. Add them all up, that means there's a total of 16 outcomes in the sample space. So with four coins, we'll have 16 possible outcomes. With three coins, we have eight. With two coins, we have four. And with one coin, we have two. So now we see a pattern. All right, so if we come up with the pattern, we can say that, uh, let me use a different color here. With one coin, the number of possibilities, the, wonder, the number of elements in the sample space is going to be two to the first power. With two coins, the number of elements in the sample space, the number of outcomes, is going to be four, which is two to the second power. For three coins, eight possibilities, that's two to the third. And for the four coins, it's going to be two to the fourth power. That's the possible outcomes. Those are the number of elements in the sample space. Now, there's another thing that we should notice. Notice here we have one and one. Here it's 1, 2, and 1. There it's 1, 3, 3, and 1. Here it's 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. That should actually remind you of an interesting pattern. When you think back to your algebra class and you had binomials, and for example, you had a plus b squared, 
a plus b squared. I gave you a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Notice the coefficients, and maybe I should have used a different color. Notice it would be 1, 2, and 1. Notice we have 1, 2, and 1. Now what happens when we take a plus b and we cube it? When we take a plus b and we cube it, we get a cubed, a squared b, oop, I'm getting ahead of myself, a b squared, and uh, we get b cubed. And now for the coefficients, it would be a 1, a 3, a 3, and a 1. Notice the coefficients, <coughs> excuse me, and notice the number of elements in the events. Hmm, what about a plus b to the fourth power? a plus b to the fourth power, we get a to the fourth power plus a cubed b plus a squared b squared plus a b cubed plus b to the fourth power. And now for the coefficients, we would get 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. And when you look over here, the number of elements in the event, making up the sample space, it's 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. So there's a lot of similarity between binomial expansions and the number of elements you find in the events of a sample space when you flip a certain number of coins. Flip two coins, the coefficients look just like the coefficients of a binomial expansion, a plus b squared. Use three coins, you have a plus b cubed, and you have the same coefficients as you have number of elements in the sample space. You have four coins, looks just like a plus b to the fourth power, and you get the same coefficients in the binomial expansion of the fourth power as you have elements in the events of the sample space with four coins. And those coefficients actually, they, when you expand them and continue expanding them, that should remind you of Pascal's triangle. And Pascal's triangle looks something like this. One, 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 two, one. And the way you develop it is you add the two numbers together like that. You always have a one on both sides. And then one plus two gives you three. Two plus one gives you three. And that's how you get those numbers. Now you do the same. You have one on both sides. And then one plus three gives you four. Three plus three gives you six. Three plus one gives you four. You have the one. And then you keep expanding like that. The next one would be one and one. You get 1 plus 4 is a 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5. And then if you keep on expanding it, put a 1 and a 1 down, you can see 1 plus 5 is 6, 5 plus 10 is 15, 10 plus 10 is 20, 10 plus 5 is 15, 5 plus 1 is 6, and on and on and on. So if you keep on flipping more and more coins, so this would be in the case of 4 coins, 5 coins, 6 coins, the number of elements you would have in the events, you can say that you would end up with one, okay, so this would be the case for six coins, so let's kind of put that into perspective, six coins, which means you would have one element where you have all six heads, six cases where you have five heads and one tail, 15 cases, four heads and two tails, 20 cases, three heads and three tails, 15 cases, two heads, four tails, six cases, one head, five tails, and one case, six tails, and so forth. So if you want to determine how many possibilities you have with certain number of heads and certain number of tails, when you flip a coin, you can actually use Pascal's triangle to come up with the number and therefore the probability. So if we add all these up, when we have six coins, how many outcomes are there? Well, add up all these numbers. You get 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 15 is 22. That would be 42, 52, 57, 58, 64. So that would be 64 outcomes. And of course, you already knew that because to find that, you get two, this is equal to 2 to the 6th power. 2 to the 6th power is 64 outcomes. And so if you want to know what is the probability that you'll get, let's say, 4 heads and 2 tails, so the probability that you get four heads and two tails that is equal to, well, that's six heads, five heads, four heads and two tails. That's 15 out of a total of 64 outcomes. So therefore, 
that's the probability that you'll end up with four heads and two tails when you flip the coin six times. Hmm. So that's one interesting way to find out the probability of any particular outcome or any particular event when you flip a certain number of coins. However, that becomes a very laborious method if you have to expand it to much greater numbers. So we should be able to come up with a more general equation to find out the probability of any outcome for any number of coins. And that we're going to do in the next video. So if you're interested in that, then keep watching and we'll show you how to find the general equation to find the probability for any sort of outcome when we're flipping coins. That's how we do that.